Hey friends, very sorry, this is almost done and I just simply forgot to upload this particular video and I ended up deleting it also from my records when I'm cleaning up uh, the system that I did uh, the hero analysis of these two new fellows but for some reason forgot to upload in my travels and the busy schedule and the craziness that I've been going through for the last five, six days. So very quickly, I'm going to just run through. Kushanku, Paladin. We know what this does. Ah, this is the attack, 766, 846, and 1577. These are the stats. Uh... Tumbling Dragon is the charge. There are three charges over here and uh, Kushank is upset. <coughs> I didn't upload the video. So, sorry buddy. But let's talk about you. So, deals 280 damage to the target. Caster goes into hiding like he's doing right now. While hidden, the caster can't receive new status effects or stacks and all received damage is reduced by minus 20. Then, when the caster comes out, there is no they, but he deals 214 damage to all enemies who used special skills while cast was hiding. And the target automatically casts mindless attack on random ally when the mana is full at the start of a turn. So it's a single whack and mindless attack. That, charge, that ailment stays for two turns. And coming out of hiding after two turns, it gives a straight whack to the special skill users. The first charge might not be so useful for the middle portion. But at very fast speed, 280 whack, okay, it doesn't look so hard. Seeing the attack stats, but uh, mindless attack is always useful. Can stop an enemy who could be really dangerous. Going forward, second mana charge, deals 370 damage to the target, goes into hiding for three turns, and reduce damage by minus 30, comes out of the hiding and 290 damage to whoever has used special skills. Mindless attack to the target, stays for three turns, and when mana is full, mindless attack on somebody, some ally, I would say rather. So yeah, this is still a little better, but it's average speed. The only benefit I see is reduced uh, damage and uh, minor increase in hit all or damage all special skill users. Okay. 450 damage at the third charge, goes into hiding, minus 40 is the reduced damage received. And it comes out of hiding, special skill users get 329 damage whack. And mindless attack is active for four turns. So, well, mindless attack is useful. And, um, but I don't know, you know. His stats are very tanky, so will come in handy. And as a tank, but... Not feeling very gung-ho about this aspect. There is survivability built in, not just from the stats, but with the hiding fact and reduced damage. But um, he is going to be less useful for the damage, more useful for that mindless attack to stop uh, a specific enemy. While he's giving a whack, but coming out of the hiding, he is giving... Uh, uh, whack all to the special skill users so there is fair amount of damage happening but still not a game changing hero that's where I believe it at as a right he has a knife which means he can dodge using his rogue talent we know what this does Great stats of attack, 894, almost closing on to 900, which is insane. 749, that's lower defense. 
it's usually built into the high attack fellows. And 1462 is the health. Light grenades. So, at first charge, he gives 250 damage to the target nearby. Target and nearby get minus 35 accuracy for two turns. And target and nearby deal 320 damage to a random ally if they miss special skills, which is based on the above. Ailment. This is cool. At very fast speed, is whacking three, giving ailments, and in case of a miss, additional. Hmm. There is punishment. Second charge, which is usually at average speed, deals 325 damage to the target nearby. Target and nearby enemies get minus 40 accuracy for three turns. Nice. And target nearby deal 390 damage to a random ally in case they miss, miss their special skills over three turns, which is also cool. Third charge, 400 damage to the target nearby. Accuracy ailment is minus 54. And target nearby deal 470. No, the damage that target nearby due to the miss deal is straight HP. So that is really badass. I like this fellow. He is, these are not light grenades. These are irritating grenades. So what I would typically do, you know, people occasionally do ask about the emblem path to take and all. So, I'll give an example. I have never asked somebody to give me an uh, emblem path. And I'm not, you know, mocking or, you know, questioning whoever is asking for it. You have every right to ask, to be more aware and do your hero emblem, uh, embleming with awareness. But I would rather empower you instead of, uh, you know, constantly feeding the same uh, thing. So, this particular hero, initially already has the attack high. So I would want to build survivability in this hero because primarily this hero will get used for me in case I have uh, at the first and the second charge. Third rarely would go till there because there is great value in the first and the second charge itself depending on what's happening on the board. So good attack. First, I would emblem in such a way that I can get this defense close to 800. That's the main thing. And let's go to a hero who is a dodger. Where the hell are you? Yeah, there you are. So, typically when I look at it, the route I would go over here is straight this and this so there's no attack then over in the second uh, portion automatically he will go above because i'm going to take again the defense part so it's 900 and in this portion i will again take the defense so three defenses really nicely do the job and then this and this and as I move forward, really getting reinforced. So that's the path that I typically take to ensure that this reaches close to 800. And then after that, I will go forward in balancing out and you know really giving him some good attack numbers. Now, why do I do that? My aim is not to blindly follow somebody else's path. My aim is to create a hero that can survive and do what the hero is designed for. So if it's a damage giving hero, then I still will want the hero to survive because what is the use of a damage giving hero that doesn't survive? If he is dead, then he's not going to give damage at all. And as SG prepares the heroes, the high attack stat heroes usually are given low defense. Because if you see heroes with high attack and high and fairly decent health, their defense will be on the lower side. So there is the strategy. And hence it becomes fairly easy and a no-brainer how to emblem. Only one thing I will point out over here is if the hero is regular average speed, then I take the route of giving that 
you know, the mana node. I follow the mana node. But if the hero is fast, very fast, I skip the mana node. Unless it's in line with whatever stats I want to enhance. So there you go. I shared my strategy and it works. So thanks for watching. Once again, my apologies for not uploading the video. I'm uploading it right now. Cheers.